Hello there and welcome everyone to the 8th part in this uh, video tutorial series about uh, OpenTK. So we have been working with OpenGL from uh, parts 1 to 7 but uh, in this part I'll talk about a feature which is uh, actually not OpenGL but it's a part of the OpenTK library uh, which you uh, might need to use in the in the applications you create using OpenGL. So this is keyboard input. Um, like you want you want uh, you create games and uh, keyboard input is actually uh, basic very important thing which you, uh, you need to worry about whenever you are creating video games um, so actually uh, the games are all about keyboard in, uh, all about input so the key, uh, input um, might be through mouse through keyboard or through the your gamepad or joystick um, so there are actually uh, three different methods for handling uh, these uh, the, these three different input devices but in this part we'll only talk about the keyboard input so actually there are two uh, different approaches to the keyboard input uh, getting keyboard input from the user so the first thing is uh, the event approach and the next thing is key states so well uh, it's not like uh, you have to use only one of them or you have to choose one of them to use but you can actually use um, both of these in your application um, depending upon uh, what results do you want so we'll first look up, uh, at the event approach so we have been defining all the event handlers for our application in this uh, start function so we similarly will also define an event handler for the key press event. So the key the, uh, key press event is triggered whenever a key is pressed on your keyboard. But its limitation is that uh, it only works for the alphanumeric keys and the spacebar. So it only works with uh, the alphabets, the numbers, and the spacebar key, and it cannot detect the other keys. And we'll talk about this limitation. Uh, we'll talk about this limitation. We'll know how to overcome it in um, in a while. But uh, let's just define an event handler for this right now. So I'll call it key press. So uh, now I'll go down here and define the function. Uh, oops. Now the arguments it takes, uh, the event arguments is of the type uh, uh, key press event args uh, and e, the e will be the object, the event argument object uh, and uh, so now whenever this function is called that means the, a key was pressed on your keyboard and actually you can use a console output to check if this is working console dot write line and I'll just write key key press and if you want uh, the uh, console output to be more informative uh, you can actually uh, what you can do is the event object which is e uh, contains uh, has a member which is e care, uh, key care so this is actually of the type character so it is the character code of the key that was pressed so this will just be the sky value which will be printed as a character so key press and the key that was pressed will be printed in front of it so you can now build and run the application and check if this is working so I'll just press, press some random keys on the keyboard. So D, A, R. And uh, if I turn on caps lock, so first thing it does not detect that I press caps lock. And the next thing is uh, it is case sensitive. So I'll press D, A, R. So it is detecting these uh, keys as different be uh, because first when we pressed the small D, lowercase D was pressed. And now the uppercase D is being pressed because the caps lock is turned on. So it is case sensitive, this type of input. Uh, and now we'll look at how to uh, detect the other keys, which are not alphanumeric uh, and uh, like caps lock shift. Um, so that uh, that is done through the another key, uh, another event handler, which is key up, or key, sorry, key down. And it also has uh, another handler, which is window dot key up. So these are triggered when a key is pressed down or released up respectively. So um, when the key, uh, I'll define the event handlers key down and for this key up. And I'll define these functions down here, uh, void key down object O and the event arguments it takes is of the type uh, actually o open tk dot input dot uh, keyboard key event arguments so this is the type of the arguments it takes uh, actually you can uh, put a using statement in your code above here 
for opentk.input so this will actually uh, you when you use this you can actually avoid uh, using this again and again because you might uh, have to use this again and uh, so I'll do the same thing uh, key down and the character of the key so it actually the E does not have the key care member but it just has the key member which is of the type key but uh, this uh, prints out in the console and we will not uh, worry about why or how this happens but it just prints in the console that's all I wanted for this now and um, we'll just use this so E dot key is of the type key uh, and you can actually uh, and it uh, is not of the type key care so this tells us that it is not limit uh, not limited to alphanumeric uh, keys but it also can detect the caps lock and other things uh, so now we'll have the same function for the key up event uh, key up event um, so now we can build and run the program and check which keys are being pressed at what time uh, so I have this window side by side here and I'll press the key A so you can see the key down is triggered first and then the key press is triggered and key up is triggered and now I'll turn on caps lock so uh, uh, the key down and key up ev uh, events also give us information that caps lock was pressed and now I'll again press A so now you can see uh, that the uh, case uh, key in key down events the uh, caps lock uh, the case case doesn't matter the whether the caps lock is on or off the same key is being pressed it does not care about that but in the key press event uh, handler the a is lower case in the first first time when the caps lock was off and the uh, in second case it is uh, uppercase so this gives information that uh, the key down and key up event handlers are not case sensitive uh, so uh, now uh, you want uh, there might be certain situations when you uh, might want to check that which which key was pressed so the method for, to do do that is actually different in key press and different in key down and key up so uh, first we'll look at key press so you can use the if uh, e dot key care equal to and since the key care is of the type care so you can directly check these with characters so if the uh, key character is small r so it'll only uh, uh, be true this condition will only be true when the uh, R key is being pressed when the caps lock is off so you can actually now console dot right oops right line um, R so this will this is what I will do for this uh, and if you want to check for the key down and key up events the procedure is different you can actually do not have the key ca key care as a member of the keyboard key event uh, arguments so you have to use key and it's of the type key so you can not directly compare it with characters so you have to use the key object key class and there are actually various options for various keys like key dot r or key dot caps lock and key dot escape various keys so all keys it has option for all keys here so i want to check r if r was pressed and the case doesn't matter so when r was pressed R will be printed out and the similar will be the case for the key up and I'll build and run this so now the uh, console uh, the output will only be given in the console when um, R key is pressed so I'll print a uh, press of the keys nothing happens but when I press R three R's are printed out but when I turn on caps lock and then press R only two R's are printed out this is because the key press event handler is not being triggered now because the R was uppercase because the caps lock was on so now if you want to give practical approach to it, uh, the thing to do might be uh, use this uh, to do something in OpenGL. So if the E dot key, I'll actually use the key down event handler for this because this is actually best. So uh, if the key was L, so what I'll do is uh, I'll first check if the lighting was enabled using GL dot is enable function so this function actually returns true or false based upon that uh, the uh, argument passed inside it is that state enabled or disabled so this is just enable cap dot lighting so this function is enabled will return true if lighting is enabled and it will re return false if lighting is disabled so if lighting is enabled I'll disable lighting gl dot disable enable cap dot 
lighting and sorry else if as that means the lighting is disabled and if the lighting is disabled I'll enable and this will enable the lighting and I'll remove the code from the rest of the event uh, handler functions and now I'll build and run this check if this is actually working so now I press L and it changes the actually uh, it actually changes the lighting state of this so there's no lighting currently you can see no shades and I'll press L and now you can see the shading effect uh, and some faces appear dark so now the lighting is enabled and I can switch back and forth uh, using the L key so uh, now this is actually good the key down um, whenever you uh, want to do something in your uh, application that uh, involves key being pressed as a single time but when you uh, want multiple key presses or when you want continuous key presses like uh, usually you can take an example of a first person shooter game uh, where you need to make the character walk so you actually press the key and hold it down and the character walks until the key is being held down uh, but you can actually not do that using these the event approach because uh, when you hold a key down uh, the event is triggered for uh, only once and it is triggered the second time and the repetitive uh, it is triggered multiple times again and again only after you have been pressing the key for a certain a certain time like uh, I'll press hold down W and the key down event will be called once and if I keep holding W down and then it will be triggered again and again continuously but that actually involves some time gap in between so that is not desirable when you want to detect multiple key presses if you did not understand what I just told you now um, you can just uh, note the fact that this the event approach is not good for multiple key presses so whenever you want multiple key presses you go down to the next thing which is the key states so um, uh, and like if you want to do actions that involve single key presses like throwing a grenade you can actually use the key down because that only involves pressing a key at a single time so now we'll move on with key states and before uh, I begin discussing that um, I'll discuss uh, another event handler with you uh, which is actually window dot render frame so sorry window dot update frame so uh, actually you can see uh, actually it's uh, pretty much like the render frame function but uh, in a case where the uh, uh, because of the uh, low processing power of the CPU sometimes the frames are not being rendered completely so the OpenGL API might sometimes skip the render frame calling the render frame function because of the uh, uh, low processing power and because the frames are not being draw drawn completely so in that case the calculations that you do inside the render frame functions might not be done and your game might move slowly this will actually decrease the frame rate but also decrease the speed at which game works so what you can do is you can perform all the calculations in the update frame functions function so if the render frame function is not being called but the, but the update frame function will be called for each frame the frame is not uh, being redrawn at that uh, at that particular time but the it will be updated at least so the speed will not slow down so uh, I'll define a handler for that uh, we actually talked about the update frame function in uh, previous parts also um, I told you I'll uh, come up with it again and we'll use this uh, we did, did not actually use this earlier so uh, void update f object o and event args e so we have the function here and now we'll, in the render frame function we're performing some operations on the rotation angle which is theta uh, I'll remove all the calculations from here and paste it in the update f function so it'll just change nothing so frame will be updated regularly so it changes nothing uh, now uh, you can actually also use this update frame function to check the key presses using the key state method so to check the key state you can actually have a keyboard state object from which you can actually check that if a particular key is being held down or if it is not being held down so first you need a keyboard uh, uh, state structure so that is actually uh, um, sorry keyboard state object uh, so it's a structure or an object uh, so uh, keyboard state object uh, so we'll name it k and equal to it's equal to key 
keyboard dot get state so the keyboard dot get state function uh, is the member function of the keyboard class it returns a key state uh, of the current key of the current state of the keyboard so it will return the keyboard state object um, and the object will have all the contents which will tell that um, at this particular instance of time which key was in what state uh, if it was being held down or if it was being held up so you can use the member function of the uh, keyboard state object which is, is key down to check if, if certain key was being held down or is key up to check if the certain key was not being held down so how you use this so we'll first uh, we'll use the if block if k dot is key down and now you want to check that if the r key was being pressed so you'll go it takes a, the argument of the type key so key dot r so if we want to check if the r key was being pressed down you can actually check for various keys like caps lock or you can also check for shift right or shift left whatever but i want to check it for r and i want to perform the rotation only when the r key is being held down holy crap what the hell is okay i missed a brace here so uh, i want to perform the calculations only if the r key is being held down so this returns true only if the R key is being held down as it will returns false. It will return false. So I'll remove this from here and put it inside this. So uh, this will be executed only when the R key is being pressed down. So theta will be incremented only when R is uh, being pressed down uh, or else it will remain same. So the rotation will not take place if the R is not being pressed. Uh, so I'll build and run this to check if this is working. So this is not rotating initially and now I'll press down R and release it quickly so it just rotated a bit uh, for the time interval that I was holding R down and now I'll hold the R key down and I'll release it so for the time that uh, the R key is being pressed it rotates and then it stops so I'll just uh, now I'll check if this is working for the multi key uh, multiple keys so I'll press the L key simultaneously, simultaneously to change the lighting state so you can see that the lighting is being disabled now it is being enabled disable enable disable enable just like that so this is how these keyboard states work um, you can um, check this for various keys and uh, remember not to use else here because if this is this if is uh, executed once um, the um, other if block will not uh, else if block will not be executed and so that'll not uh, help you detect multiple key presses so you have to use separate if block for all of these or you can actually use switch or different uh, methods you want um, so this is all about keyboard input and hopefully we will talk about uh, mouse input in the one of the upcoming parts so that's that was all for this part and thanks for watching